Sean Patrick Villanueva recently got a sub-6 average using Rue, which makes him the third best in the world and the best Rue user in the world. So today I'll be giving a more in-depth tutorial. The one from before is more of just showing you Rue, so I'm gonna rename that one to Overview. While if you want to get into Rue, this video should be enough. The first step is to make a 2x3 block on the left side, and we're gonna use a fixed color scheme to make learning easier. So that will be white on the bottom and green on the left. Here we'll start by considering that this is one cross edge with two F2L pairs attached to it. So we'll first hold the green center on the left and we don't have to worry about where the white center is because this block doesn't actually need the white center. Find the white green edge, that's over here, and then just find a way to attach it to the bottom here. Now we need the two other green F2L pairs. So we have this corner or this corner and I can just take this corner and this edge because I see this pair and then find a really efficient way to pair them. Don't try to do it in an F2L kind of way. Instead, we can notice that these two can be paired like this. Now, once you make a pair, just insert it over here. We can do that with L, U prime, and then with CFOP, you have to end with L prime because the cross is on the bottom, but here there's no cross, so we could just rotate if we want to. Next is this corner and this edge over here. So anytime you have an edge in the M slice, you can use the M layer to move it around. So in this case, since there's no right block, we can actually just use all of the right two layers to move it around. So in this case, one way we can pair this up is like this. And that puts them together and then all we have to do is insert it right here but remember since there's no cross you can get more efficient than usual now anyone who actually uses rue is probably yelling at me saying you don't have to make the cross edge first you can make a different edge first for making a square in the beginning i'll be talking about that in my next video about more advanced rue tips once the first block is done do the same thing on the right side with also white on the bottom so again we'll follow this more beginner kind of method where we find the cross edge first and just solve that one first and then next we need these two f to well pairs and so here i see this orange blue and this orange blue. So in this case, similar to before, you can try out things and see what pairs it up when this is in the M slice. Uh, if I move the corner over here, then I can move it up and see that doesn't pair together. So I'll try the other position that has the white on the side and that's going to be at the back over here. Then when I move this up, they actually do pair together. So now it's blue orange, I have orange on the front, I'll need to insert it over to here. Now this is where in CFOP you would think to rotate and then insert, but in Rue we are never going to rotate. So instead, anytime you feel like you have to rotate, just add the M slice to your turning in some way. And that's going to be like this. And then we have this and this making our last pair. If it's already a case you see in CFOP where you don't have to rotate, chances are that's also the fastest way in Rue. So in this case, we can just do it however you do it in CFOP, which could be like this this to pair it up and then insert. And then next, as you do your last move, you just wanna make sure that either a white or yellow center ends up on top. The next step is to solve all of the corners. This step is called CMLL or corners of the last layer, but with M in it because it ignores the M slice. Beginner CMLL solves this in two steps and uses nine algorithms, which you probably already know even if you just know beginner CFOP. So the first step is you orient all the corners. So you take a look at where all the yellows are. And then you can imagine there's a cross here as well, or you can imagine any edge orientation that works. And so if you know full OLL, you will know that F R U R prime U prime F prime will solve this one. So that gets all the yellows on top. If you don't know these, you can go watch my two look OLL video. The next step of CMLL, look for headlights, which is solved corners on one side. If you only have headlights in one spot and not the other spots, then make sure it's on the left. If it was not on the left, then make sure you don't turn the cube, just turn the top. And then here you could use T perm or J perm. Here is T perm. And if you don't have headlights anywhere, then you do Y perm, which is like this. So you probably know those from CFOP, but if you haven't learned them yet, then go watch this video because that teaches you the intuitive way to memorize them. But you could also learn 42 algorithms to do CML in one step. And that will be covered in the description. Okay, before moving on, make sure you know how to do M and U moves quickly because we'll be using that for the rest of the solve. First, you have to pick an M hand and a U hand. It doesn't matter which one is which, just make sure one of your hands can do M moves and the other one can do U moves. So I use my right hand as my M hand, but you can use your left hand, it doesn't really matter. So with your M hand, use your thumb and index finger to hold this block. And with your U hand, use your thumb and ring finger to hold this block. This is because your U hand needs to do U moves like this and your M hand needs to do M moves like this. So all of your fingers are needed for this step besides your pinkies. Starting off with how to do U moves, make sure you can do a push this way and a push in the reverse direction like this. And then for U2, you have to be able to do a double flick. For M prime, use your ring finger to push up like this. You can also use your middle finger, which is what I prefer to use. 
For M2, you do ring finger followed by middle finger, which is why it's good to know both. For M, this is a bit tricky, but use your ring finger to push from here over to the top back. Or again, you can use your middle finger, which is what I prefer to do. The next step is edge orientation, and we want all the top and bottom to be completely white and yellow. So if your white and yellow centers aren't already at the top and bottom, then put one of them at the top. It doesn't have to be the correct one. So at the end of the step, we may see something like this. All of the edges have white or yellow on the top and bottom. So anything you see on the top and bottom that isn't white and yellow is a bad edge. So we have three here. At the bottom here, we have this one's good and this one is bad. So we have four bad edges. When you have three at the top and one at the bottom, this is the case we'll always use to solve edge orientation. Or if it's not in this case, we will set up to to this case. So if your bad edge is at the front, then have these all facing the front and then do M prime and then U in either direction and M in either direction. Now, if you have three bad on the top, but your bad one is at the back for the bottom, then simply move it to the other side and do the same thing, but in the other direction. So we'll do M first and then the rest is U and M in any direction. So we can go U prime, M prime. So those cases are the three movers because they take three moves to solve. And here is every other case you could get along with how you should set it up to the three mover. These aren't the only ways to do it, but if you're just learning, you should just learn one way to do each of them. And this is a little like memorization. It's not very hard to memorize. You could figure out why it works intuitively, but you don't have to. In the next step, we'll solve the left and right edges, which are the green and blue pieces. Now, if they're both in the top layer, just take either one of them and move it to not the top layer using an M2. So now we have green at the back here and we want them to be on opposite sides. So if green is at the back, then we'll put blue at the front. Next, do M, U, 2, M, but the M's can be in any direction. So we're gonna pick these a little bit strategically. For now, we can say the first M goes either way, so I'll do M prime. And then do U2, and the last M, we wanna make sure that these two pieces go to the bottom. So once they're both at the bottom, you can now just intuitively place them to the top while solving them. So since blue is here, we wanna place it to the top with M2, that's gonna put it back here. So we want blue at the back here like that, and that solves the left and right edges. Here we're gonna solve the rest of the cube, and there are a few cases you can get which are pretty much all intuitive. The most common case you'll get is a three cycle of edges. So this edge is solved, as in it's correct within the centers, but then this one is not, and this one is not, and this one is not. For a three cycle of edges, what you wanna do is find the one that's completely out of place. This one is not connected to either correct center, so this is the wrongest one. Uh, this one is connected to one, and this one is connected to one, so this is the wrongest one. We're gonna take that and its nearby incorrect edge and put them both in the top and just do U2. Then the rest should be obvious. We're gonna take these two, move them there, and solve it. And here's another example of a three cycle. Here, this is the one that's the most wrong, and we have this one, and we have this one. So we're gonna take the, this one and the one next to it that's not correct yet and move them into the top and do U2. Then we're just going to solve it like that. Another case you can get is a double swap. So these two need to swap and these two need to swap. So simply swap one of the pairs using U2, then bring the other one up to swap using U2. And then you can solve it. Here's another case where the swaps are on the front and back. Again, bring one of them to the top, do U2, bring the other one to the top, do U2, and then solve it. The last case you can get is all the centers are wrong, or you may see it from an M2 away, and that looks like all the centers are right, but all of these pieces are really wrong. In either of these cases, you can do U2, M2, U2, and that will always set up a double swap. And you should know how to solve a double swap. That's just swap one of them with U2, and then swap the other one with U2. Another way you can solve the four centers case, which I don't personally think is faster, but I don't know what actual Roo users agree on here. You could solve this by doing a regrip like this and doing M, E2, M prime E2. So that can be done extremely fast, but I don't think the regrip is worth it. I'm not sure. And if you get this case, which is just M2 away from the center's case, then you can just do both M's for this. So M E2, M E2. So here's a beginner Roo example solve using the same color scheme that I said. So I'm gonna do a green block first. Just keep in mind, you don't have to do this color scheme. This is just the way I'm using for simplicity. So I'll start by holding it like this and get this edge at the bottom here. And then next we need other green F12 pairs. So we have this one and this one. I can do U2, R2 to pair them up, and then insert it with wide R prime F. And the other pair is this one and this one. So here I notice green is closer to me. So I'm going to move it away and get this edge in a way so that green is closer to me. And then I can pair them up like this. Now I can get it to the top with R and then U prime B inserts it. All right, next onto this side. So I'm gonna just insert that cross edge. We have this one and this one. So here I can do it in the F12 sort of way because it's rotationless, so it's quite fast. So that would just be like this. 
and then we have these two. So in this case, it will require a rotation because I would have to do it like this for F2L. So instead, I'm not gonna do it that way. So remember what I said, anytime you think you need a rotation, use the M slice in some way. So in this case, I can take this piece and just move it like this. And this gives me a rotationless case. Now, this doesn't always give you the best way to solve it, but it is a good start. So I, now I can just do this. And actually on my last move, I'm just gonna do a wide move there so that I have white or yellow on top. Next, I'll do two look CMLL. So I have my yellow corners here and here, and I can do this algorithm to get them on top. And then I will do the second look. So put my headlights on the left side. Next, I have a bad edge here and a bad edge here. And you can look at this chart again if you forgot how to do it. So that will just be like this. And then that sets up the three mover. All right, now we have green here and blue here. So they're both on top. I'll get them to the bottom. One is at the back here now. Get the other one to the front. And then just a trick, if this is opposite, you can push this down first. So we'll do M first, even though you could do M prime, which is better for finger tricks. In this case, doing M first actually makes this solve right away. And then so once we solve the left and right edges, we have this is solved. This one is really wrong. So I know I have a three cycle of pieces here. So I'll swap this one with the one nearby. That is also wrong. And then I'll swap these two. And then that's it. You can learn about the benefits and downsides of Roo in my comparison of the methods between Roo, CFOP, and ZZ. Even if you don't end up sticking with Roo, it can be fun to learn and you can learn some new things, such as recognizing corners for CMLL can really help with CFOP as well. Way back in the day, I took a few months to learn Roo thinking I'd switch to it. I didn't end up switching to it, but I don't regret that experience. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.